What's going on, Office Hour subscribers? This is the Chris Donaldson, and welcome to my new office. As you guys may have seen earlier, we've been doing a little bit of construction work around here, and I'm very excited to be in my new office, which means new lights, new cameras, but same Chris. If you're new to Office Hours, let me explain to you a little bit about what this show is here for. It's here for you. There's one thing that I care about in the whole world, and it's that you win. So whether you're a real estate agent, small business, you're curious about marketing and advertising, this is the show for you. We do it live for a reason. And we do it live so that you can interact with us during the show. That's part of the fun. So if you've got questions at any point, please bring them on. Whether you're watching on YouTube, you're watching on the Chris Talks Watch page, or you're watching on Facebook, we love you all. Instagram too. So you can either post your question in the comments or my favorite place on the web. You can hit us up with the hashtag Office Hours on Twitter, and I'll be looking for your questions there. So whether it's related to what we're talking about tonight or something in general, real estate business, small business marketing involved, we are here for you guys. Literally, this show was built completely around you. So for the real estate agents out there, or anybody that's bought or sold real estate out there, we're going to be getting tactical tonight. We're going to be talking about the actual gritty, grindy world of working through a real estate transaction. And the reason for that is because we've had some changes in our industry that are relatively important, and I wanted to bring on someone that knows as much, probably more than me, to help us wade through some of these issues with disclosure. So I'm joined here by my good friend Everett Fennerin, two T's, one N, make sure you spell it right, and uh, he is an attorney. Before you turn this off, I trust him, and I call him sometimes when I have questions about real estate contracts and various things. So, Everett, why don't you introduce yourself to the Office Hours subscribers and to the watchers and to the listeners who will hear this, and then let's get into the subject matter. Oh, thanks, Chris. I'm really excited to be on the show again, Everett Finneran, spelled like fine ran. Um, I'm, <laughs> I'm an attorney. I do a lot of real estate litigation and, and transactional work in the New Orleans area. Uh, and I, I'm also a, a broker and co-owner of a real estate company called Athena. And so we, I have a pretty unique interest in the topic we're going to talk about tonight, both in representing clients and working deals and, and worrying about my own company, my own agents, and making sure we stay out of trouble and, and take care of our clients. Um, I, I Just a little personal about me, I, I have three kids and I have a fiance, and so we're, I'm actually getting married next week. It's true. Uh, and I'll it's be true. in Costa Rica thereafter. So hi, hi, Jamie, if you're watching, I'll, I'll see you soon. <laughs> she better uh, be watching. And, hi, mom. <laughs> 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 so I'm really excited to be here, man. You, you're doing great things. Always, uh, it, it's an honor to be on your show, Chris. Absolutely, man. I appreciate the time because uh, I'm going to pick your brain a little bit. Because my background, of course, is as a real estate agent, as a real estate broker, as a marketer, a negotiator, you know, in the trenches. But I'm not a lawyer. Right. And I don't ever claim to be. But it's interesting, the kind of interaction and the, and the conversations that we had before, how you can add to either my level of knowledge or at least clarify my level of understanding of some of these things that I know well or these forms that I read all the time and sort of some important pieces of information there. So for you guys out there, especially you real estate agents, the reason I wanted to have tonight's show about disclosures is because we have had a massive change here in the state of Louisiana and I'm seeing ripple effects. If you're watching from other states, we're seeing property disclosures being changed, amended, clarified across the country in addition to ours. But for our large Louisiana audience, I want to talk specifically to you guys for just a second. In case you weren't aware, March 1st, we've got a new residential agreement, uh, a residential property disclosure rather. And the disclosure form has been changed with a couple of really key differences that I want to make sure you guys are aware of. So to get a little background, let's talk first, Everett, about the concept of disclosure first, because consumers and agents, yeah. let's make sure that we set the stage. And that is that when you're buying a piece of real estate, that by law, 
you have the right to know what's materially wrong or you have the right to do a due diligence inspection so as the buyer hire experts get them in there before you actually buy the house know what is right or wrong with it ahead of time and one of the biggest things that we do as real estate professionals is we have disclosure forms that we can help navigate that we use to make sure that somebody that's buying a house knows at minimum or supposedly what's right or wrong with it but here's the problem the previous form and a lot of states still have this yet three choices as a seller so Everett, i give you the the disclosure form and you fill out yes i'm aware that there's a problem no there isn't or in k which is no knowledge or i don't know and the problem that we had and you can maybe add a little bit more to this case was a seller who checked no about a major defect on a property not aware that there was a defect and unfortunately after the sale it was later discovered there were some serious problems but the problem for us in the industry came when the judge at the louisiana supreme court said the seller checked no fraudulently and the moment the judge uses the word fraud we've got issues not the least of which is that as is waivers of redhibition all of those types of things no longer apply and so we as a real estate industry had to do some scrambling because now even if you check no you think that is the correct answer it turns out to be wrong well the judge disagreed you want to add a little bit to yeah, that yeah sure i mean it was the, the case was scared the heck a, out of me as an agent it was kind of a shocker for the industry <laughs> because this was not a situation where the the seller knew there was a defect he just didn't really have reason to know one way or the other. And so just checked, but checked no. The option at the time was also no, no, no known, no known defects. But he checked no. <laughs> and the court says, well, if you're saying no, you're promising that you didn't know of any, that there aren't any defects. Not that you didn't have reason to know of them, but you're saying, I've, I'm aware that there are no defects. And the mm -hmm. court says that even if you didn't have actual knowledge of defects, you could be defrauding the purchaser in that situation. So you thought you signed this great waiver of the warranty against redhibition. You love it. That's a beautiful form. It was. It, it, we all use it. It's in the purchase contract. That's all out the window. It doesn't apply anymore if, if, if you've defrauded the purchaser. It was a big shock, and that's what led to the, one of the things that led to the, the change in the form recently. Yeah. I mean, so we were all concerned because we're trying to do the right thing, the seller thought they were filling out the right thing. And so part of what we're going to bring forth is if you're a real estate professional, this is the episode for you because we're going to get tactical about what you actually do on a day-to-day -day basis, the advice that we deal with, the disclosures, the stuff that goes on actually through a transaction. If you're a consumer out there, you're going to see all the work that your agent's doing behind the scenes that sometimes you're not privy to see. So the idea here is that you checked no, but then the judge still said, well, you should have checked not known. That's right. So guess what we did as an industry? We changed the darn form. And so effective March 1st, one of the biggest things I want everybody to be aware of in Louisiana is that we removed the no box. So we said, okay, judge, I see your point. Now the new disclosure form, no, is not an option. So for real estate agents that are practicing in Louisiana, the new form effective March 1st has removed no. Now your choices are yes or no knowledge, or like I like to say, I don't know. And so what I'd like you guys to understand is the amazing impact of that and that now your sellers clearly still have to be honest, but it's either yes, I'm aware of it, or yes, I know this answer, or I have no knowledge. So one thing that I've heard before, Everett, and I just want to dispel this, is that I have heard, and I want everybody to listen, I have heard, and this is bad advice, but I want to hear Everett say it too. He doesn't know I'm about to say this, by the way. I have heard people suggest that they just have their sellers put NK for everything. That's very bad advice. Tell me why that's such bad advice. Because, look, if, if you know of a defect, then you have a duty to disclose that defect. <laughs> if you have reason to know of a defect, then I'd, I'd go a step further and say you, you, you have a, a duty to investigate and determine if there is a defect. 
So if there's any question, you, you got to find out for sure. If you do know of a defect, you have to put yes. As an agent, if you know of a defect and you know that your seller is putting, now it will be NK, I don't know, you can have liability. You had actual knowledge of the defect. You have an obligation to disclose it just as much as the seller did. Uh, so hopefully that, that answers your yeah, question. Yeah, I appreciate you doubling on that because I've heard that advice given and it scares the heck out of me because clearly, I mean, if your property, let's say, it had had termites at one point and was fixed, the answer is yes, it had termites and the stuff was fixed. If you put not known, that's fraud because you know differently. And so I, I don't understand it. So the one thing I want out there from a tactical risk management standpoint, if you've heard that advice, it's bad advice. Because if you advise your client to commit fraud, now you're a party to it, right? I mean, right. You've and given look, them the advice. If I'm the, if I'm advising a client, Ugh. or if I'm the, if I'm the client, if I'm selling my house, I want to over disclose. I don't want liability on the back end. I'm telling you, there's an alien abduction. There was, you know, whatever there is that, that was possibly wrong with the house. I'm disclosing that. I'm so going to ask you about that later. On the back end. <laughs> Alien um, abduction story. Is that how you became a lawyer? That was between us, Chris. Oh, I'm so, well, you said it on live television. <laughs> right. It's no longer between us, All right, my friend. Catch out the back. Yeah, just so that you know. All right. Um, so that's the number one thing. So you guys, if you're practicing in Louisiana, if you're a real estate agent, make sure that you look at that form. It's a different deal now. There's no longer a choice for no. That's dramatic difference. The second one addresses a concern that started coming up recently after major flooding events, starting right here in New Orleans with Katrina, get into Harvey after that in, in Houston area. And that is what happens if you don't have flood insurance and your property floods? Because my hometown of New Orleans, we know this all too well. And the amazing thing about floods is almost every time when the statistics come in, I don't know if you knew this or not, maybe because you took my class last year, but about 80% of the properties affected by any given uh, flood need to apply for federal assistance. Mm. So they either don't have insurance mm -hmm. or they're underinsured, but usually they don't have insurance. Mm -hmm. And the reason is, is because many flooding events end up flooding areas that are in no flood zones. Right. The problem is, is once you have, a, have accepted something like FEMA money, there is this little known but very important clause that's written into your grant called the obtain and maintain insurance requirement. And what that means is you can have the money this time, but in the future to protect FEMA's grants and the chance of loss going forward, you must obtain flood insurance and maintain it. Now, the reason that's so important is this is real estate 101, guys. It attaches to the property. Sorry, but the mic it attaches to the property, not the property owner. So if I buy a house that is subject to the obtain and maintain flood insurance requirement, I'm told that I don't have to have flood insurance, but actually the property subject to obtain and maintain. Let's go down this bad road together. Then that property floods. I try to get FEMA assistance and they're going to turn me down as the new property owner because that property was subject to that requirement. Serious, scary issue. So therefore, again, your industry is helping you out. The second major thing I want you guys to see is we've added that information on the disclosure so that you can ask the sellers and get it to potential purchasers. So if you look on uh, the new form, what question is it? Number 45 was a seller or previous owner or recipient of any road home grant, FEMA money, SBA loan, et cetera. Guys, as real estate professionals, this is a question the seller needs to answer. And if they know the answer, the buyer has the right to know because they may be required to either maintain or obtain flood insurance or they're going to be in violation of the law. So do you want to add anything to that? Because it's a very scary thing. And I think there are consumers out there that may be sitting on properties that may not even realize they're in this situation. Yeah, no, I mean, I, yeah, I, I agree with you completely. That's, we did have this thing called Hurricane Katrina, and there were yeah. uh, quite a few grants that were given out. And so this, I think, you know, is a pretty pervasive problem. Uh, you know, the only thing I'd add is, look, that if it if the the obligation runs with the land, it should be recorded in the public records. And should. So, um, you, someone should catch this with the title company. Maybe. Maybe. I'm not saying you don't have a, a I mean, you, you, you obviously have to disclose it. Your client has to disclose it. But I would hope the title companies are doing their jobs and they're going to find this out. Possibly. Uh, 
<laughs> I'm always looking at worst case scenario, uh, right? Well, yeah, me too. Hey, well, it's, I'm glad it's on the forum now. I think that's a, a exactly. A I think thing. that what we're seeing here is two major issues were instantly uh, revised for your benefit as a pro to where now the no is no longer an issue because we just took it off the form. And then the second is now we can ask our sellers that very important question so that the purchaser has that information so that it can do their due diligence. Okay, I think that's incredibly important. So one piece of advice that I would offer is that if you are a listing agent and you've got a property that's been on the market since before this new form, you may want to go back and double check that you've asked or you may want to update that question about the federal disaster assistance because that law has only been in effect since 1994. <laughs> so this isn't a new thing. So if you want to protect yourself fully, now you've got the disclosure document, you might want to just go ahead and amend by adding the new one and having your seller at least answer that question so that you are disclosing the information that should be disclosed. Whether the answer is yes or they don't know, at least you've asked the question, right? No, I agree, I agree completely. Good, as you should. <laughs> See, the lawyer says I'm right, then, then typically so I'm far, probably... So far, so good. So far, so good. I haven't stepped on anything yet? Nothing yet. Okay, all right, good. I'm going to step on something at some point. Just just, just bear with me. Um, so, guys, in Louisiana, that's the big thing I want you guys to know. The disclosure form has changed. It's a very important change in two main areas. But there's, of course, several other things that have been changed. I mean, I'm looking here at the updated, and I mean, just about every line... There's, I mean, they had to remove all the no's. But Everett, you noted when we were talking before the show about something else that is of note with the disclosure form that sellers, agents, I think all of us should be aware of. Right. And so, you know, the first page of the form is, has uh, a list of exemptions where you, the, your uh, client, the seller, doesn't have an obligation to fill out the form at all. It doesn't have to make these disclosures. And you're all familiar with some of the exemptions. If it's an estate sale, for instance, or related to a bankruptcy or you know a foreclosure things like that you don't have to do the disclosure form and because you're not actually occupying the property right, right. how you're, would you know what's wrong with it that's right yeah. you, to, to, theoretically that's that's theoretically what's going on. right right and so it, it, in that situation normally what you do in the past is you just say I'm exempt and here's the, the basis for my exemption it's an estate sale it's a succession sale the real estate commission has added some language to this now and it says that uh, if you're claiming an exemption you also are warranting that you have no knowledge of known defects to the property and i think this is very significant because the the, the law says that if you do fill out a property disclosure form otherwise you're not providing a warranty and a warranty means I, basically i'm i am uh, guaranteeing that there are no defects if i say none known mm -hmm. that's not what you're providing right but now the Real Estate Commission has added this language of a warranty if you're not filling out the disclosure form. So I think agents really need to advise their clients, if you are, are thinking you're exempt and don't have to fill out this form, there's some language now that says you are basically filling out the whole form and saying you're not aware, you're warranting that you're not aware of any defects in the property. Um, now, the, you're, you're saying you have no knowledge of them. So look, if this is really a succession and this is section representatives in Arizona or somewhere like the, the case is often going to be, and they haven't lived in the property, then they don't have any knowledge of, of the defects and we don't have a problem. But I, I really think they need to be aware of, of the liability that they have, that this really is effectively saying, promising, I don't have, I'm not aware of any defects. All right. So that's a good point. And it's very intelligently put. Let me dumb it down for non-legal language because that was a lot of legal language. Okay, if you if you sign that you're exempt, and you're actually not exempt, or you do know something's wrong with the property, then when you provide a warranty by law, a warranty means a guarantee, which means you're legally liable. And I think that the laws were traditionally written that when a seller was transferring title to a purchaser, they made certain warranties so that purchasers were at least reasonably protected. Like, hey, you actually own it when right. you sell it to me. Right. So a warranty is a strong legal term, and, and it's it's a debt that you point that out because if I have a seller that says, oh, you know, I'm exempt, but they have intimate knowledge or maybe they're not exempt, you might be open to a whole can of worms, right? That fraud word could come back. Right. And then again, let's go back to that. The moment the judge uses the word fraud, 
all the waivers of so Red Abyss go away. So the way fraud works is it, 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 it cuts through everything. Yeah. So you thought you it's waived the ultimate Red Abyss. You thought you had a contract. You thought everything was beautiful. But look, if there's fraud, all bets are off. And so that's, it's a really powerful tool for, as a lawyer. If I can allege fraud, I know I can get my attorney's fees. I know I can undo a contract. Like we call it rescind the contract. I know I can get these warranties back that, that were waived. It's very powerful. So if and how is there fraud? If you know of a defect and you don't disclose it, guess what? That's not just violation of the disclosure form. That's fraud. That's what that is. So you're liable under this this law, the disclosure law, and under the law of fraud. fraud. All right, I'm scared. Yeah. Thanks. All right. I don't want to. I don't want to say anything else. I can't. You're, you're you're a client. I can't sue you. So. Oh. <laughs> Well, you know what else? I think you could say whatever you want under free speech on YouTube anyway. That's true. Maybe. YouTube, I love you. So look, I, I think that what we're getting at is if you're a real estate professional, make sure you're aware of the changes and why we made them and that they're incredibly important. If you're a consumer or anybody that's related to the real estate transaction, let's also just remind ourselves uh, of the importance of the fact that if you know something's wrong with a property, you have to disclose it. That's why these legal cases are there. That's why the, these these lawsuits can carry out. Is because at the end of the day, you can't just have somebody sign as is and then lie on a disclosure. So one of the big keys that I always talk about is what as is means, and we use a different term in Louisiana, but what as is means is as it is disclosed. And I think that's incredibly that's important good. to yeah. remember. Um, so that if your seller lies, commits fraud about what they're supposed to disclose, uh, basically the term, the legal term is vitiates. That's very is good. Is that I'm not impressed. the term? That's vitiates. Uh -huh. Vitiates. vitiates. He couldn't pull that one, but I could. Uh, uh, well, I didn't want to use a big legal word. Well, yeah, you know, that's my you Latin. You know, uh, mom made me take five years of Latin, so it pays no, off. No, but I, I mean, if, going back to what you were saying, sort of the history of disclosures, the traditional law was caveat emptor. There's another one for you. Buyer okay, beware, baby. Buyer beware. And so in, if you were in the common law in England and you bought something and the seller didn't tell you about a defect, that's on you. Buyer beware. And we've, you know, through the years, this is through, in modern times now, we've, we've shifted away from that. And so there are obligations. We've recognized as a... As, our law has recognized that the seller needs to tell you material information about the property. Serious business. Um, and so that's that's kind of the transition now where the, the, the duty to to book, to inform is now on the seller as opposed to the duty to, to investigate on the buyer. Not that the buyer doesn't have any duty to investigate. The buyer certainly does, and we can talk more about that if you want. Uh, sure. Let's talk about that a little bit because I think... No, I think it's a big one. Yeah. Well, I think that what happens when people buy a house and specifically real estate agents out there when we're working with buyers, I think the idea of what an inspection is, an inspection period, is commonly misconstrued. So during the inspection period, Everett, if I'm buying your house, what can I inspect? Well, anything. And what can what be can, an inspection? What can, you, what can you not inspect is, is really the question. I mean, uh, you can do physical inspections. You can. Uh, you, you have the right to have the the utilities on to do inspections of, of the utilities, the water, the electricity, um, the soil, the, the roof, the structure, all of this. Generally, you wouldn't be able to do destructive testing where you destroy the walls or, in, or in that sort of thing, but, but otherwise it's pretty well, I think that's important. wide open. And, what, and you know, the importance of this is, look, there is this, this uh, exception to the fraud rules that we're trying to scare you about a little bit. And this exception says if there was an obvious defect even though the seller didn't disclose it to you, like there's a big leak in the roof and there's water dripping when you come in the property. If you don't notice that as the buyer, the seller's not liable to you for fraud. That, that's an exception to the rules on fraud. So as the buyer, you do have an obligation to do general inspections. If it could be seen through a basic inspection, then the, the seller may get off the hook if you don't do it. So it's important to advise your clients of that too. That's the importance of the inspections. You can't completely rely on the disclosures. If, if you're not doing the proper inspections, then you, you can run into problems. All right. So basically, let me make the most obvious, the, the most clear, and the point that nobody seems to want to make, but it's my show and I'll make it. And that is, this is why you need a real estate professional. 
Because look at us for 30 minutes. We're sitting here talking about all these details. And me and him have years of experience and knowledge. He, as an attorney, and, and as a broker as well, but I look at you as an attorney right sure. now. Yeah. And me, for years, I mean, I read. I've been through the transactions. I've been through the wars on both sides. And what I want you guys to understand is it's these types of things that a real estate agent and a professional can do for you. And sometimes we think of them as, oh, they stick a sign in the yard and they host an open house and then, oh, they get this commission. There's a whole lot that's going on there that sometimes we don't even see. And that's good because part of the reason that you would bring me on is to relieve the pressure for you. So real estate agents out there, my challenge to you is to make sure that you are behaving and operating and continuing to be an actual expert. You got to know this stuff we're talking about. It's the reason that we're doing this show. I want you guys to stay ahead of the consumer because it's these things. This is the value you present that you can sit down with a seller and explain to the seller, look, Everett, I know you don't want to disclose that your house flooded, but dude, this is why you need to. Right. This right. is what the law says. This is what can happen to you. And you'll be filling it out before I finish the sentence. Whereas if I'm working with a buyer, explain what their inspection rights are, what they should in, they may encounter, you know, all those types of things. So there's a lot more to a real estate transaction, I think, and it's becoming more complicated, which is why we're seeing more real estate agents involved in more transactions. It's a growing industry, not a shrinking industry. And robots cannot replace somebody like me and ever. There's, there's no way. Unless, yeah. was, the, was the alien a robot? The, the alien that abducted? Yeah, what is that about? I'm going back to that. Yeah, you know, if, if is that you're going to have to buy is my Is that house, what turns you into a... If you want a disclosure, you got to buy my house. Yeah. Do you have to disclose <laughs> if aliens abducted you at your house? No, you don't. Are you and, sure? You know, yeah, yeah, I'm sure. Okay. So, so you know, there's this... That's good to know. There's role on psychologically, make it <laughs> psychologically impacted properties. And, uh -huh. and so in, th this is something that's mixed in different states, okay? And so in Common law, states, they call it stigmatized property. Stigmatized yeah, property. Same that's thing. right. Look, this man knows. Um, and so in some states, look, if, if you, uh, if there was a homicide or a suicide in your house, a triple murder in your house, you have to disclose that. That's something as the buyer I would want to know, right? Um, or, or if the property has become stigmatized because it's, it's viewed in the public as being a haunted house. In some states, you'd have to disclose that. In Louisiana, we have a statute that says you don't have to disclose that. Even if there's a murder, there's a suicide, or it's otherwise psychologically affected is what we call it here. There's no obligation to disclose that, and the real estate agents can't be liable for that. But in other states, you got to watch out. In California, for instance, if, if the homicide or suicide has been in the past three years, you'd have to disclose that information to the buyer. You could be liable. Oh, man. Interesting. So I think that what that means is that's why real estate is still incredibly local, right? Right. Because if we go cross over like, to New York or somewhere else, there may be completely different, completely rules. different rules. And yep. you got to know your local rules. And that's what, real again and again and again, the value of a real estate agent presents to the, to the transaction. So we're at about uh, 8.30. So let me take this as the halfway point to welcome in anybody that's jumped in at some point or to pause for a moment and welcome you into my office for office hours. This show is all for you. It's a real estate show. It's a small business show. It's a marketing show. Literally, the whole reason that this show exists is to help you win. There's no flip at the end. I'm not going to sell you something. Literally, if you look at the YouTube channel, we've done 30 episodes, average of an hour apiece, and we've never sold you a thing. I'm literally built this as a side project because I want to see you win. So we're doing this live instead of taped and cut up, and all of Everett's mistakes being edited out, <clears throat> uh, rather than doing that, we do it live so that you guys can ask your questions. So if you got a question related to disclosure, definitely bring it on. If you got a question about real estate in general, marketing, curiosity question, or for the next, I don't know, 15 minutes, Everett has offered free legal advice <laughs> worldwide. <laughs> so any legal issue, marriages, divorces, car wrecks, right? What, what do I see on the billboards? <laughs> He's freaking out right now. Alien the bar can't come after me. Alien abductions. He's the guy. So I just want you guys to know that we're doing it live for your Q&A. So I'm going to ask a few questions of Everett so he gets his chance at right. Q&A. And there's three ways, again, that you guys can ask questions. One, if you're watching on Facebook, post it in the comments there. 
too. If you're watching on the watch page or YouTube, post your question in the comments there. Or three, if you like Twitter and you're on Twitter, use the hashtag office hours and we'll see your question there. So while you're pulling your questions about anything real estate, marketing, or business related, I got a couple of follow-ups for Everett. And by the way, if you're out there watching live, give Everett a thumbs up, give him a heart, give him a surprise face, give him something, because this is a lot to do. I mean, look, you got lights, you got people staring oh, yeah, at you, yeah. right? They're counting down. Right. It's a little different right. than didn't, it looks on the other end. Didn't even have hair and makeup done for me when I got here. Sorry, but man. Thanks for the water. Well, you're welcome. <laughs> That's all you get. I mean, you know, what else do you need? You're going to sue me. All right. So here we go. I got a couple questions from Mr. Everett. First and foremost, let's take your advisement as a, a, an attorney, somebody that knows legal contracts well. Let's help those that are working as real estate agents What's like one common, easy mistake that you see? Like as a mistake, agents are trying to do things right, or maybe they've been taught incorrectly, that we can flip over and easily correct to, to save them some headaches that you may see. I'll give you two. All right, we got two. All Bonus right. one. So first one is, look, there are a lot more deadlines in a contract than, than you might think. <laughs> okay, and so what, what you need to do when you get a contract signed is go through page by page find all the deadlines put it in your calendar put it in your calendar the closing the inspection period and and it's your obligation as the agent to make sure that these things happen to, to sort of co coordinate all the pieces you know things things as simple as also beyond what's in the contract do, do does your client have your if you're the buyer does your client have insurance on the property make sure that 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 has happened or have utilities been transferred uh, th those kind of practical things are, are, are important because they're, look, your client's looking to you to do that, number one. And number two, if you don't do it, your client's going to be upset with you. And, and so that's not good business. The second thing I see happen is what happens you when mean you actually manage the transaction. Manage the transaction. Put, put the deadlines in your calendar. Maybe even let's get crazy and invite the client to the deadline so that they have an appointment on their calendar too. Um, the second thing is, you know, what happens when you get, I've seen agents, not, not our agents, fortunately, but I've seen other agents who uh, will, will get multiple offers and they'll, they'll respond and they'll have out counters to multiple offers. Mm -hmm. You got to understand when you have a counter, if that counter is not accepted, if that, until that counter is rejected, it's an offer, it's open, it can be accepted at any time. So you don't want to get in the position of having uh, the, the, a counter, two counters accepted and you got two contracts. I think that's something really simple to avoid, but you just got to be aware of the issue. All right. Let's go back to that second one. Yeah. Because if you're watching from around the country, if you're watching in Louisiana, in Louisiana, we deal with offers a little bit differently because we have, I call them irrevocable offers, irrevocable yeah. offers, yeah. use whatever language you want. I like to draw it out because that's the Southern in me, yeah, right? Man, man. So an irrevocable yeah. offer means that the buyer uh, knows or the offeree knows they have until that time frame to make a decision. That's right. It also means it expires if no decision is made. So what you just described, just so that you guys understand, if I got two or three of these out at once, technically the seller could end up under contract with two or three buyers at the same time. Is that legal? Yeah. Well, is it legal? No. I mean, you you can have multiple contracts, but you're going to breach one or the you other. Can't sell the house to multiple. Can't sell the house to right. multiple. So you're going you're going to have one contract, and you're going to breach another inevitably, unless you you get lucky and the the buyer backs out. Uh, um, that's a serious problem. Let me yeah. just cut to the chase. Don't do that. And if you do that, you're definitely liable because the seller can't sell two people at the same time. You're going to get sued. You're probably going to lose because you wrote the contracts, advised the timelines to allow this to occur. So the number one thing we have to realize is we got to be very careful and understand that we're managing a transaction. It's not always easy. If you got a great property, you got five, six, eight, ten offers coming in. You got to manage those deadlines. You got to manage those timelines, and you got to make sure that you don't accidentally sell a house to multiple people at the same time. Now, in other states, offers are revocable prior to acceptance. So in other states, it may not be as big a problem, but still could be a concern. But here, it's definitely a problem. Because if I make an offer that says it's open until noon tomorrow, you get to wait till noon tomorrow. That's right. I yeah. can't sell it to somebody else. You have rights. That's that's the default rule in Louisiana. Anytime you put an expiration on the contract, on the offer, 
It's ir irrevocable is the way I would say it. Irrevocable in Louisiana. So you and, say it too? So I, I say it too. Yeah. All right. I'm, I'm, so good. You don't say irrevocable. I think you're trying too hard when you say it that way. Yeah. It's, it's... <laughs> <laughs> Anybody out there that says it that way is like, no. That's fine. That's fine. Don't, don't get your feelings hurt. I just could never pronounce it that way, so I pronounce it this way. Yeah. Um, you know, I want to ask your opinion on something. Sure. Real estate agents out there, if you've taken a class with me, you've heard I'm on a little bit of a mini crusade. What's your opinion on checking midnight as the deadline for an offer to be accepted? I'm, I'm not a big fan of checking midnight as a deadline. Mm -hmm. or, or, what what is your opinion? I, I mean, I, why? I just, 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 yeah, well, like, what, I mean, midnight is a checkbox. Right. So people use it. Right. And it's logical, the end of the day. Right. But what does that end up meaning? I gotta stay uh, up till maybe, midnight. Maybe you got some insight beyond beyond what I'm thinking. It just isn't practical to me. I mean, it's when is when is the client gonna respond? People aren't staying up till midnight to respond. But ah, let's talk about that. Right. So acceptance requires two things, not just a signature. So if I wake up the next morning, you sent it over to me, and you're my client, and then I send it to the other party, is that accepted? It's expired at that. It's point. expired. Thank you. So, well, but that being said, if if it's expired. if ever, if it's if it's signed and everybody proceeds from there, we've talked about this before. I, I think that you have a contract. I think it's been what's called ratified. Uh, but it, you're in a gray area, okay? So let's let's just not go there. And as what I, I advise my clients is, let's avoid those gray areas. Let's be clear. All right, so if you guys are watching live, if you think we should just remove the midnight checkbox, let me know, and I'll see see if I can you know make a call. Because I think we should remove the midnight checkbox. I think it causes problems. People don't know the difference between 11.59 and midnight. They're, they're causing themselves problems. We've got irrevocable offers, and then you've got a time frame for not acceptance, which requires notification. I could do a whole show on this, guys. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to back <laughs> up. Back up. Stop using midnight. Use 8 p.m. Like, what's up? And then watch office hours. Come on. All right. So, Everett, part of the reason that you came to me and part of the reason that we, we know each other is that you've watched office hours on occasion. Sure. Is there anything you've gotten out of this show that maybe you could share with the audience to show you how tactical we are and how we're giving out real advice that can help you in your business, whatever business yeah, you're Yeah, I mean, you've, you've given some great tips on dealing with contracts and the sort of the nitty-gritty. I'll tell you the biggest thing I, I, I've taken away from our relationship in general, our business friendship, uh, is the importance of training, mm -hmm. really of training. And so, you know, as a, as a brokerage, as a, a brokerage Athena, we've sent a lot of agents to the Superstars program and, and consistently they've come back and they've said, this is a fantastic program from new agents to experienced agents. And the, and the program, I'm just going to give you a little pitch because I really am a big fan, is all about not, not beyond the, the rules and the law said you have to apply beyond these continuing education courses you have to take on insurance laws and disclosures and all that. That's we got to know that stuff. Mm -hmm. It's it's the business side. How do we get clients? How do we build our network? What are the nitty gritty kind of things we need to do on a daily, weekly, monthly basis to be successful? And so many agents we see coming, they don't have that knowledge. They don't have that training. They've got all this technical knowledge on the rules and how, how contract law works, and they, they know all these new words that they've learned about in, in Louisiana, but they don't know what to do to be successful in business. And so I think what we're trying to do at, at, at our brokerage too, and we hope to work with you on it, is to develop really the, that kind of training for our agents by video where it's accessible and it's easy for them to, to see. And well, let so, me, well let, let, let's stop right there because I think there's an important piece that we sure. all need to understand. And that is, it's the challenge question that I get to everybody is what makes us an expert and it's a lot more than just I have a license. And I think that having a license is really important. It brings you to this level. But to understand that now you have that license, look, we're constantly going over this stuff. There's changes. There's things that are going on. But more important than that, you could be the greatest disclosure reader, and you could have the greatest contract knowledge of all time. But if you have no clients to use your contract knowledge on, what is the point? 
So one of my big things is let's build your business first so that you have the clients coming in so that you can use your knowledge, show your expertise, and then you get into that snowball effect. Because what I'm passionate about, guys, is very simple. The reason, if you haven't watched Office Hours before, if you watch this whatever uh, recording uh, on YouTube, I want to share with you guys, we got 30 episodes. We're celebrating episode 31 here in our new spot. And what I want you guys to understand is those are free. And every episode, if you go all the way back to the beginning, all the way through, we'll show you how to take your real estate business from zero to where you're actually needing tools, services, expensive solutions because you got more business than you can handle. And so what I want you guys to understand is Office Hours was started as a side project for me to be able to get that tangible information to you. Because I don't believe, like the world will make you believe, that real estate agents, salespeople, businesses fail because they're not willing to try hard. I think it's access to information. So what I'm here to do for you guys is break down the barrier to the information. And if you're willing to put in the right work, doing the right things, you're going to win. Because it works time and time and time and time again. So when people say, oh, there's the 80-20 rule in sales. 20% do 80% of the business. Well, have they looked at stats lately? Because in most markets, it's the 90-10 rule or worse. Well, what is it that that top 5 or even 1% knows that you don't know? I know. And I want to give that information to you. And then let's see if you're willing to put in the work. So what I'm here to share with you is the office hours really should be called a project because really the office hours project. And why I ask Everett that question and why I ask you the question is if you've taken something from this show, you've put it into practice in your business and it's worked, man, I want to hear from you. I want to know what it was. Just like two episodes ago when we brought on a Superstars graduate who talked about things that he learned in our programs that have just absolutely killed it for him. So my point here, guys, is that I don't want to just get you through the exam. Although, if you look at the books up here, yeah, I'm an author, and I'm an author of what people would consider boring things, textbooks, exam prep manuals, all these things. That's a really important first step. And I respect the heck out of how hard it is to get through that step because that's not as easy as people think either. But once you get to that step, if you want to succeed, you want to last, you don't want to become a statistic, hang out with us here at Office Hours. If you want to know about the Superstars program, you can send me an email. I'll send you a link afterwards. The most important thing that you guys can do, if you're catching this show live, the most important thing you can do is make sure you're on the email list. If you're not subscribed, you're missing out because every single week, you're going to get a recap of the show. You're going to get the, the important moments. You're going to get the written version of the big stuff. You're going to get things in the email list that you're not going to get on YouTube. You're not going to get on Facebook. Come join us and, and catch what's going on. Everett, are you on the uh, the Office Hours email list? For sure. Are, are you? Yeah. Did he just commit fraud? Because <laughs> I can look it up in the CRM. Pretty sure I'm on there. All right. Well, let me just show you how to do it real quick, just right. in case you're not. Okay. So all you got to do is go to christalks.com slash office hours. That's all you got to do. christalks.com slash office hours. Right there at the top says, enter your first name and your email. Boom. Done. And what you're going to see is we want you to be on the inside. We want you to be part of the movement here. We want to break down the barriers to information. Oh, yeah, I want you to actually right. be on the, the, the list. <laughs> yeah. So you guys noticed that he thinks it's funny. I knew he wasn't on the list. You don't think I researched <laughs> he, that before the show? You don't think I didn't know that? I know my clients, baby. That's what I do. So get your butt all on right, the list right. and quit enough. messing up. And the rest of you guys, um, let me look. Uh, I was looking at Twitter, on YouTube, on Facebook, first of all. I want to thank everybody for watching. Elaine and you folks over here on Instagram Live, I want to thank you guys for watching because we stream this live for you guys. It's about you. And if you guys weren't watching, it would get a little lonely over here with just me and a lawyer and a bunch of lights. Uh, this guy. Yeah. All right. See, you put your name and then, you, yeah, your email. See, it's real, it's real simple. That's it. Now he's on the list. And so now you'll get an email recap of the episode that you were just on. It's beautiful. So you can brag to all your other lawyer friends about how cool you are. I already did that. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, guys, last chance for any questions, uh, and any curiosities. Everett, thank you for the kind words about what we're doing on the show. And so, listen, anybody out there that's watching, 
I've got a couple of things for you. Number one, on a previous episode, I had my friend and author and speaker Lee Brown on the show. And I've got a couple of her books left over that we didn't have a chance to give away last time she was on the show. If you're looking for that show, it's called Zillow, It's Not Your Problem. And that was episode 21. The full thing is living on YouTube. We have not taken it down. We're not charging for this stuff. So if you'd like a copy of her book, let me tell you what you guys need to do. I want you to go over to my Instagram. So if you're not following me on Instagram, that's where it's all going down. That's where it's all going down right here. If you're wondering what I'm pointing at, it's Instagram Live. Instagram at Chris Talks Daily. It's not back here. Where is it? It's not back there. At Chris Talks Daily. And all you've got to do is three things. One, turn on notifications. So whenever I post something, whenever we put out something of value, that you'll get a notification. Number two, I want you to comment that you did so. And number three, like the post so I can find it. You do those things, you can get one of these books. And then one winner, one person who does this, is going to get a free hour of one-on-one -on -one business analysis or coaching with me. Whatever I can do to help you, on the house a whole hour either right here in our house or we can do it virtual depending on where you are because if you're not familiar with me yet one of the best things i can do is analyze where you are and what you're doing and tweak it to make it even better that's what's fun for me so anything i could do from somebody that's trying to pass the exam to somebody that's starting out new to an agent that's not hitting their goals I'm your guy. Let me help you. All you got to do is go over to Instagram, turn on notifications, comment that you did so, like the post. And um, that's essentially, I think, a wrap. Unless, Everett, you got anything for the audience, for me, or anything else? Uh, no, I think I think that's... Do we are have any questions? Are you sure? Are you sure? I love questions, yeah. Well, I did get one question that okay. we kind of referenced, but I'll go back to it for you. All right. And um, Elena asked, if I have a seller that I currently have a listing on the market. And now we've got the new property disclosure form. Okay. And I'm concerned that, for instance, she didn't say all of this, but I'm kind of feeling in. Let's just say she's concerned about the federal grants, the FEMA money, that part. Should she go to her seller and get a new disclosure filled out for best risk management practices or just stick to the one that she's got? You know, okay, well, let's, I'll give you a... a, a don't give me a legal answer. A legal give me a real answer. answer. Okay, and so let me just, there's, there's a little more information you'd want to know. And that, that the law, the disclosure law says, look, if my disclosure was accurate when I provided it and something changes, I don't have any liability. It was accurate when provided. Mm -hmm. Now, if you learn later on that there was, that it wasn't accurate when you provided it, and so at the time there was structural problems with the property, or termites or something like that, then you have a duty to go back and correct it. In mm -hmm. this situation, for good, good risk management practices, disclose it. There's no question in my mind you go and disclose it. That's always going to be the, the best course, and, and why would you not do it as, as the, the, the agent? Certainly would recommend to your client that they do it and recommend it in writing. So you re Yeah, I, I think so, because I think if they're aware of it and we know that it's not addressed on the form, then now we've got something that's out there, right? right? And if I'm personally aware of it as an agent, I have actual knowledge. I cannot just hand out that old disclosure form because now I'm liable for distributing false information because right. I know that there's something, right? That's just age old. If you're preparing for the real estate exam or if you're a real estate agent, you got to know that, right? Just because your seller doesn't want you to disclose it, if the law requires it, you got to do it. So... Everett, if he's like, man, look, you know, my house flooded, just don't tell anybody. Mm -hmm. Or, oh, there was some mold, but we painted over it. You know, whatever. If you don't put it on the form, I have to make sure that it's disclosed. That's right. And if I disclose it, is, is verbal enough? No. How should it be disclosed? If, if, if it's not in writing, it didn't happen. Say that again? If it's not in writing, it didn't happen. One more time. If it's not in writing, it didn't happen. There we go. So, guys, ladies and gentlemen, we've got this at our fingertips. I'm grabbing your phone because i got Instagram over here. You can text. You can email. There's a million ways you can do it in writing. But if you verbally disclose something and then you end up in court, it becomes he said, she said. That's right. And the law is going to presume the unlicensed person more often than not, only because we have forms and we have written training. We have things that we could have done. That's General right. public consumer is going to be protected, right? That's right. I mean, it's just kind of the way yeah, that that's, it is. Yeah, that's, that's, courts are, are, are pretty biased to protect the consumers versus the professionals. Yeah, not every that's time. No, that's no secret, right? That's, yeah, well, I mean, that's what it's there for. As a yeah. citizen, I want to be protected. Right, sure.
Okay. So it's something as simple as that. Just make sure you get it in writing. So good question there. Um, guys, if you're on Twitter, work the hashtag. I'll be hanging out over there afterwards. If you watch live on YouTube, Facebook, any of those things, make sure you give Everett a like. Make sure you give him an emoji. Let him know that he did a good job because streaming on live television is not an easy thing to do. So we'll be back next week with an all-new episode. I'm lining up some guests, I think, that will be amazingly beneficial to you, which includes a super, super special guest I'm excited about next week so that if you don't catch it live, you're going to really miss out, in addition to some other national names you may know and also somebody that I think is very interesting that I'll introduce to you guys who works in a really small town and kills it. So if you think that you are in a small town, therefore you can't make the money that others can, he's doing it, and he's going to come on and show you how he does it. So got a lot of good things in the works for you guys. Make sure that you catch us on Office Hours. If you're not on the email list like Everett wasn't, get <laughs> on the email list. And until next time, guys, we'll be here. I want to see you win. Thanks so much.